Adobe Premiere Pro is a great tool to assemble time-lapse image sequences, and it's relatively easy as long as you follow a few rules and know a few tricks. To follow along, copy the files that accompany this tutorial to your Creative Cloud account. The first thing you need to do is shoot your time-lapse. Assume that you need 30 images for one second of video. This could be different depending on the time base of your sequence settings, but for now, assume 30 frames per second. That means a 30 second time lapse needs 900 images. So depending on what you shoot, crowds, clouds, or sunsets, you'll probably want to click the shutter at an interval of one shot every one to five seconds. The images that accompany this tutorial have already been optimized for your use. But since you'll eventually be working with your own photos, it's important to prepare those images before you work with them in Premiere Pro. For example, Premiere Pro does not accept raw image files, so you will need to convert them into a format that Premiere Pro accepts, such as JPEGs. And even though Premiere Pro has great color correction tools, it's best to develop your images in Lightroom or Photoshop before you import them into Premiere Pro. If you're not planning on doing any camera moves on your images, that is, zooming in or panning across them, then crop them to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and scale them down to HDTV size, which is 1920 by 1080. Here is a Lightroom catalog of a series of images that I shot in Prescott, Arizona. I developed the first image and cropped it to 16 by 9, and then used AutoSync so that all the rest of the shots matched. When preparing your images for Premiere Pro, it is important that the file name for each still image contains an equal number of digits at the end. For example, name 001, name 002, and so on. And that there are no missing numbers in the sequence. I can easily do this in Lightroom upon export. I will also scale the image down to 1920 by 1080. Once your images are prepared, you're ready to import them into Premiere Pro. Go to the Media Browser tab and navigate to the folder where your images are stored. In the flyout menu of the Media Browser tab, there's an option to Import as Image Sequence. Make sure this is checked. Now all you need to do is select the first image in the sequence, right-click on it, and select Import. And Premiere Pro will import all the images as a video clip. Be careful. If you select an image later in the sequence, your imported video clip will start at that image. The newly assembled video clip will adopt the name of the first image you selected. It will even have the JPEG suffix, which can be confusing when you're editing. It's a good practice to change the name. Go ahead and click on the name in the project panel and rename it to something more useful. You may also notice that your new time-lapse clip's frame rate is 29.97 frames per second, not 30 frames per second. Don't worry, TV is really 29.97. We just round up to 30 as it's a lot easier to say. Now we need to create a new sequence to put our time-lapse into. Under the File menu, choose New, to Sequence. In the pop-up, open the Digital SLR folder, and then the 1080p folder and select DSLR 1080p 30. The 1080 indicates full frame HD of 1920 by 1080 pixels, and the 30 stands for 30 frames per second. You will notice that in the preset description, it indicates that your sequence is really 29.97 frames per second. Go ahead and give your sequence a name and press OK. Now you're ready to drop your time-lapse clip into your newly created sequence. The Arizona time-lapse clips that accompany this tutorial should drop in without a hitch. However, if you're using your own media and it's not the same frame size as your sequence, exactly 1920 by 1080, the Clip Mismatch Warning dialog box will pop up when you do this. Don't panic. For now, click on Keep Existing Settings. We'll cover this dialog box with the next set of images. With the Timeline panel selected, double-click to the left of the video track to increase its height. Press the space bar and watch your time-lapse unfold in the program panel. This time-lapse clip can be treated like any other video clip in Premiere Pro. You can trim it, apply video filters, and even change the playback speed.
Now we will explore performing pans and zooms on a time lapse. The trick to keeping everything sharp is to use images with a resolution greater than 1920 by 1080 and place them into a 1920 by 1080 sequence. The greater the resolution of the photos in your image sequence, the more you can zoom in and still keep everything sharp. We will be working with sample files that accompany this tutorial, the Niagara Falls image sequence. The original photos were shot using Camera Raw and are 24 megapixels in size, that's 6,000 by 4,000 pixels, or 12 times that of an HDTV frame. Definitely overkill. Images this large would choke even the fastest computers. So, after they were developed in Lightroom, they were scaled down to 50% of their original size and converted to JPEGs on export. At 3000 by 2000 pixels, we still have plenty of flexibility to pan and zoom. Let's import the image files from the Niagara Falls time lapse. Since we've just done this, we'll go through these steps pretty quickly. Open Media Browser, locate files, make sure Input as Image Sequence is checked off, select the first image in the sequence, import, and rename. Once again, we need to create a new sequence. File menu, choose New, Sequence. Now Premiere Pro remembers the last settings you used when creating a sequence, so all we need to do is name it. Niagara, Falls, Time Lapse, and hit OK. If you double click on the clip and load it into the source monitor, you can see the entire image. But when you drop it into your newly created sequence, two things will happen. First, you will see this pop-up that we saw earlier. Again, we need to click Keep Existing Settings, or the sequence's frame size will change to 3000 by 2000 pixels, matching the size of our media, not the size of a high-definition TV frame. Once in our 1920 by 1080 sequence, only part of the image can be seen. If I zoom out my view and double-click on the image, the animation frame appears and you can see how much larger it is than the video frame. We'll use the fact that our image sequence is larger than our TV frame and create a slow pan and zoom out. First, make sure that the playhead is positioned at the head of the clip. Now click on the Effect Controls tab and reveal the Scale and Position Controls. Notice that the clip's scale is 100%, yet we do not see the entire image. Realize it is 100% of its original 3000 by 2000 pixels. So as long as you do not scale the clip any larger than 100%, your animated time lapse will be as sharp as the original photos. If the animation frame isn't visible, either click directly on the clip in the program panel or click on the small square icon to the left of the word Motion in the Effect Controls panel. I'm going to position the clip by grabbing it and dragging it to set the framing for the beginning of the shot. Start off with a close-up of the American Falls in the boat. When the clip is positioned, click on the stopwatch icons next to the scale and the position sliders to create the first set of keyframes. Now, position the playhead at the end of the clip. Scale and position the clip directly in the interface. Grab the corner of the clip's bounding box and scale it. And grab inside the frame of the clip to reposition it. If you look over at the Effect Controls panel, you can see that Premiere Pro has created new keyframes for this position. Let's play the time lapse back and look at our camera move. I like the effect, but I feel that the actual speed of the time lapse is too fast. I can slow down any clip by right clicking on it and selecting Speed Duration from the pop up menu. Let's slow the clip down to 50% of its original speed. I will check Ripple Edit Shifting Trailing Clips which will push any other clips after our selected clip out of the way. And, under Time Interpolation, choose Frame Blending, which will smooth out the slow motion. Frame sampling just repeats frames, so I wouldn't recommend it. However, if you were dramatically slowing down your video, Optical Flow is incredible as it uses frame analysis and pixel motion estimation to create brand new video frames. The downside, it will take dramatically longer to render and export the video. Playing this back, the boats and clouds don't seem as frenetic. If your playback seems choppy when watching your time lapse from the timeline, don't worry. 
With such a CPU intensive task, you may need to render your video to see it play smoothly. To do this, make sure that the clip is selected, go to the sequence menu and choose render in to out or render selection. Once the render finishes, the bar at the top of the sequence will turn to green and your time lapse will play back smoother. As you can see, creating simple time lapses and time lapses with movement is easy in Premiere Pro.